Deanna Ferrari, um, at DFerrari on Twitter. Thanks for everyone for coming this morning and getting up super early. Um, super excited to announce our keynote speakers this morning. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Pittsburgh Dad and you have some sort of connection to him, even if you aren't familiar. Everybody has somebody like that in their families if they're from Pittsburgh. So um, uh, the two creators are here today and we're really excited for them to take the time out um, to come and talk to you guys. We're going to do a very informal discussion with them. So if you have questions, comments, shout them out. We're going to just kind of chat with them for the next half hour or so. But first, if you're not familiar with need a refresher, we're just going to play a quick video. We do skip it at Hey, you just wash your feet off now, little rocky by the pool area before you just got in that pool. Hey, well, I told you, you just can put that slip aside in my back door. And make sure you close this garage door, because I'm trying to eat the whole neighborhood. No, I ain't buying you any more pop. You drink half the cane, leave the rest lying around the house so bees and bugs get in them. I think we should have three tables this year. We have the adult table, the kids table, and the money table, which isn't even in the house. Hey, Paul, you ever think about maybe cutting that grass of yours? Oh, Phil Sims, what do you know about it? Tell you what, why don't you just get out of Jeffy's house and tear up his parents' furniture for a while? I'll call Santa Claus right now and tell him to skip this house. Hey, take that Ravens flag down. Where the hell do you think you are? You think about maybe taking them Christmas lights down before Memorial Day is here? And I told you to put a shirt on with a collar on it. Or your Steelers jersey. Oh, look, he's poisoned. <laughs> oh, no, he's thirsty. Again. Oh, I know Pat's eye looks creepy. Just don't look at it. You know, it probably could help you out, right? If you had more purple in your uniforms. Because when I think football, I think purple. It's the DVD morning show. Thanks for having me pack on the show. Just get out of the house. Jim Brecht, who's at Gazelle Week, met up with him at the house in Pleasant Hills where they shoot <laughs> everything on an iPhone selling. It's lights, iPhone, action. No, I ain't buying his Lunchables. There's chip ham and bread in the fridge. Help yourself. I bet you they find James Harrison just for watching Tom Brady get set. <laughs> <laughs> you say your hand out of box to get the toy. It's all balls and eyes. And that turns to me, she says, What team would you like to be on? Team Edward or Team Jacob? I says, How about Team Normal? <laughs> <laughs> Well, how's every time you people done playing the video games, my TV don't work? Skateboards? Oh, I'm not down the church, ain't bad out there. Mike, the situation? What's the other idiot's name? Bob, the circumstance? <laughs> there, that catch you moving his folding chair. There's jagger bushes all over there. Hello, we're not at the house. Please leave a message. Oh, you put that down there, man. <laughs> hey, me all the way. Butt off the pew. I know it hurts, it's supposed to hurt. You kept that Facebook movie so long we could have bought it. All right, tell you, it's like God knew y'all was gonna end up with the flyers. He put Jack right in his name. Yeah. <laughs> if I have to hear this door slam one more time, a bolt is shut. Can you have happy meals? You should be happy you're having this meal. Then Peter and, and Kat never have to eat these poison berries. I says, give me some of them berries. Give me the hell out of this movie. And I say, I says to Deb, my wife, I says, Deb, I think there's a twister coming. Jeez, that ain't no twister. I said, oh, that what do you know about? Get off the phone, you're gonna get electrocuted. Hey, guys, it's a pop fly, not a live grenade. Oh, I know Jeffy's allowed to stay out late. His dad's an idiot. Buys batteries down to 7-Eleven. During the whole movie, <laughs> David Banner don't want to beat a haul. I says, I paid $40 for these tickets. You better hulk out the moment that thing starts. I tell you, every time you and Jeffy watch that YouTube, I end up having to take you to Med Express. First thing you do when all you little girls get together, to seek out the devil. I had the sack of your weird dollar and a frame set of state quarters. That's all gone. Right down to the goodie bar guy. The kids get presents on Father's Day. Yeah, I got you a bag of mulch. Get going out there. There was a bangle furry and a raven furry. Oh, I was praying for a Paul Mullen furry to come and take them out. No, I like them sparklers off each other's. Or use grand cigarettes. Oh, it wasn't two minutes into the movie and that Chandler Tate's walking around with his butt out. Oh, hey, Paul. Oh, hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Oh, hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Yeah, can I talk to Tom, please? Hello, Tom. Ravens suck. You know what's next, right? Ants. Well, you know what's next, right? Snakes. Well, you know what's next, right? Bees. Go home, Jeffy. Stay away from the house. <laughs> Welcome uh, Chris Prexka and Kurt Wooten. 
got it right. You got it right. Yeah. I really feel like this chair is going to break. That would be embarrassing. Which shop just work, yeah, that's okay. All right, so I guess I'm Wow, you guys look really far down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, I'm going to be asking these guys questions, but if you have a question for them, just raise your hand and we'll get to you and just project so we can hear and I'll repeat your question. So I guess, guys, just first tell us about yourselves on a personal level, professional level. Just give us the download. You know, your 30 second spiel. Um, so, I went to a film school here in Pittsburgh at Point Park in Pittsburgh Filmmakers. Um, le when I left school, did a feature called Captain Blasto, uh, which was like a $7,000 uh, independent feature film that Kurt actually auditioned for. And when he showed up, I was like 23 at the time, and he called me Mr. Prexta. And I thought that was hysterical, his audition. He's like, hello, Mr. Prexta. <laughs> That's my dad. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we had done uh, Captain Blasto together. From there, we did a uh, series called The Mercury Men, which was a science fiction series, like black and white throwback, like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, which Kurt was also in. And it was on set that he first started doing the impression of Pittsburgh Dad um, on Mercury Men. Yeah, and that's how. Oh, gee, that's what. That yeah, uh, that's how it happened. Um, yeah, I was. I went to school at West Virginia University. I uh, studied acting, and after that, I. After the humongous success of Captain Blasto, I thought it was. <laughs> oh man! Oh, you think it's gonna work? Gonna <laughs> <laughs> start yelling. <laughs> so, wait, is that working now? So after Captain Blasto, I moved out to Los Angeles, where it's the easiest thing in the world to become an actor. If you never knew that, very easy to do. Um, <laughs> And with all the success out there I had, I thought it was time to come back to Pittsburgh and really give Pittsburgh Dad its, uh, its weight and give it a real shot. So, here we are. Plus, I'm sure it's very inspiring to be in the seal town to get all your Yeah, it actually has been a lot easier to write the episodes being around my fellow Yenzers. So. Yeah, just go to the grocery store. Exactly. Just caught her right there. <laughs> Chris and I have become quite the creepers when listening into other people's conversations around town. We'll just be like, what did, he, what did that dad say? That's going to be episode. You'd be, you'd be amazed at how often like a real dad's comment, like we're at the, what was the, what was the dad say at the uh, drive-in? We were at the drive-in theater oh, with the candy. The kids were just asking for all this candy here and there, just like, dad just like, oh, I tell you, you kids are killing me. <laughs> absolutely killing me. Just heavy stuff like that, so. Cool, well, um, so you were just playing around the one day with Pittsburgh Dad. Did you film him then, or did you have a plan like no, that? No, um, so we had shot Mercury Men in 2008, and he was on set doing this impression of his own dad. Um, and so he, one of the first things I remember him saying was the bit about, you better make sure you wash your, wash your feet off in that bucket by the pool before you get in that pool. And the whole crew lost it because we all heard the same thing. Um, and so it was shocking. I couldn't believe that all of us. And there was a, there was a lot of people there from Ohio on the cast as well, or on the crew as well. And even they had heard some of this stuff. Um, so we were all kind of struggling. So we had been talking a while. Like, is there anything we could ever do with this character? Can we, you know? And we could never quite figure out where it would fit. We're like, who would want to just see this dad that yells? No. Um, but we um, uh, last year was actually a year ago. Um, this past Thursday was the one year anniversary of it, and um, we had been. At, Congrats, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, we we were just sitting at lunch, and we literally had just had nothing to do in the afternoon. And we just I just said like I was like let's just go back to my place and just film you being your dad. We'll throw it up online. He's like, what camera do you use? I'm like, ah, uh, my I just got an iPhone. I'm like, it's a better camera than what we shot Mercury Men on. So I'm like. Um, it's in HD. I said I, you like couldn't believe it. I remember you're you're like, yeah. what do you mean that's HD? I'm like, it's HD. I swear. Um, and so we just in in five minutes we shot him improv completely improvising the first episode, and we just put it up just for our parents. We're like, oh, our parents are gonna get a kick out of this. We said we said we think we'll get 50 views. We said first day I said oh, my guess is 50 views. I said. 20 of them will be our family. The other 30 will be some people that have seen Mercury Men and Captain Blaster and are just confused. <laughs> and just, like, don't know what this is. Um, but the, and so we, we guessed 50 and that first day it did 1,000. And so we were just staggered. I mean, I know in the grand scheme of things, 1,000 doesn't quite match like, you know, viral, you know, like a Joseph Coney video did like, what, 30 million in an hour or something it's like that. It's not Charlie bit my finger. Yeah, it's not Charlie bit my finger numbers, yeah, but like, <laughs> The, th the thousand really staggered us, so that was our first inkling, like, whoa, there might be something more here. 
Cool. And did you edit the first one, or did you just put it up as is? Yeah, yeah, we edited it. We um, so we, as soon as we were done filming it, we ran it upstairs to my uh, editing equipment, and we're putting the footage in. We said we would love to do an intro like uh, Mr. Rogers or All in the Family. We said he's kind of like this Archie Bunker character, so we love to get a throwback to All in the yeah. Family. So we started looking for music. And um, we found the theme, like the theme is just garage band, you know what I mean? So we get all these emails, people are like, you know, people are stealing your theme. I'm like, well, it's not really ours. <laughs> yeah. Stamps.com, I swear they're taking your theme. Yeah. Um, so they, um, people all the time will send us emails and they'll be like, like who's that amazing jazz artist <laughs> that composed your theme? We like, Kenny G. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it's a uh, garage band. But, so we found the music and then that was also when we found the uh, laugh track. And so we oh, all, okay. yeah, we, if you don't know, Pittsburgh has a laugh track, which some people really hate, <laughs> and some people really love, and I don't know. But, uh, That's yeah. throwing it back old school, though, because you don't see Yeah, that. because it's a throwback to Archie Bunker and stuff. Exactly. And, stuff, so. yeah. and the, um, the other thing is that that laugh track helps temper the character, like, because he's always, I mean, you just saw, he's just yelling. Like, he's just always yelling the whole time, and so having the laugh track kind of, like, tempers it a little bit. It makes it, like... Give, you know, makes it a little bit more laughable, a little bit more fun. Yeah. Plus it gives people cues to laugh if they're clueless on when yeah. to laugh, which is not necessary. <laughs> uh, what street is that that you film in the beginning? Uh, that's uh, that's Crawford Avenue in Munn Hall. Oh. Yeah, that's my old street. It's where I grew up in middle school, so. Perfect. I, I actually pictured Pittsburgh that live in Munn Hall, so. <laughs> So talk about the, the process of shooting these videos in terms of where do you get the inspiration? Obviously your families and people in, you know, Giant Eagle. But um, talk about like from start to finish and how long does it take to edit and all that kind of thing. Okay, well, um, a lot of the inspiration just comes from uh, Chris and I's experiences growing up and uh, just, you know, what current events, uh, mm -hmm. mo like mo recent movies that come out, anything that maybe, you know, we can tag and only, like people will look up that movie and they'll link to us. Uh, That's smart. So, um, it, just anything really, whether it's a holiday, whether it's just something that's like like a Steeler game or anything like that. So, I mean, we just, Chris and I will um, come up with an idea, say, just for instance, um, we're doing a Halloween episode this week, so we say, okay, we're doing Halloween, and we'll sit down, we'll write the script, come up with the jokes, and that'll take a couple days, and we'll go and get all the props and stuff we need. We'll shoot it in an afternoon or two, depending on whether or not our location is baby ridden. So we, we shoot at the real house when people are like actually living there, so <laughs> it's good. it takes a long time. And then we, um, we shoot for a couple hours, then uh, take the footage, convert it, and then Chris goes to work with his mastery and just edits the crap out of these things. He's, he's really meticulous and does a great job. So. Are you still shooting them on your iPhone? Yeah, it's still shot on an iPhone. I mean, eventually we, we'll probably move to uh, some other type of camera or some other type of production. But uh, the iPhone, it just like, it allows us to be just so quick and easy. You know, I mean, it's just, it literally yeah. is just the two of us. Like every episode is just the two of us. Um, and so it's fun. You know, it's like we, we don't have to organize this crew, you know, because all the other projects we worked on, there, it's been a whole crew. It's been, and it's just, you know, while, while set up. Yeah, exactly. It's like, while you love that, this also gives us the ease to just like blow through some stuff. There, there are limitations with it. Right. There's times where like we get frustrated by some sound issues because it picks Lawnmowers, up. Lawnmowers, yeah. airplanes. <laughs> yeah. People coming up and talking to us. Yeah, so there's a. Yes, man. Uh, but yeah, and then it also creates a level that the iPhone for us also creates a level of authenticity because it doesn't feel like this overly produced show. It feels like you are peeking into a family's house. You know, it kind of feels like you're kind of get this view into a more personal view. Yeah, plus it's so convenient too. You don't have all this equipment or anything. I noticed that on my iPhone, I just use it for my camera now instead of my regular camera, because it's better probably, and it's easier to use, and then I can edit it right on the camera. Yeah. Cool, so one thing that I noticed is you guys don't have a website. You just have a YouTube channel. Talk about that. Why didn't you want to do a website? It's, it's not that we don't want to do one. It's it's honestly, we just don't have time yet. I mean, like we, we've got this list of a, a million different things we want to do with the series, but the, the, the fact is it is just the two of us, you know? And so yeah. we're trying to grow it as fast as we can. Um, but it, it also, it happened so quickly. Like this was never intended to be a show. This was never intended to be a thing, a business or anything like that. It was literally meant to be an afternoon distraction um, and just kind of a little homage to our parents. Um, and so 
we had, you know, when, once we, when we did the show, I, I, in my past series, had become so accustomed to grabbing Facebook and Twitter and, and YouTube and just grabbing the names just because you never know what's going to happen. And so just in habit and instinct, before the second we shot the first episode, I just went and grabbed Twitter, Facebook. Um, I, the, I would have grabbed the domain, but someone had already got PittsburghDad.com literally a week before Pitt, we shot Pittsburgh Dad. Yeah, this guy registered PittsburghDad.com. And it's just straight up a Pittsburgh Dad. Like, he posts our videos on it. <laughs> yeah. What a jag. So, but, but we, so we just didn't intend for it, so we, we never really, um, and, and then for a while they were like, what would they even go to the site to do? Everything that they want is, at, uh, is, is being delivered to them where they're already at. You know, so we will get a website. We will eventually, sometime here in the next couple months, get a website because people have to find really wonky ways of contacting us. You know, we'll get like as did I. Yeah, like we like you know, uh, like a sponsor will literally post in the comments of YouTube, like you know, I'm from Icy Light. We would like to. Or I'm from Iron City Brewing. You know, would you please call us? And I'm like, it'll be in like the comment section. You know, so we we need a better official. Channel. Yeah, you need an email, I think. Yeah, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Uh, but that's a good point too, because I know a lot of people here today have different businesses or endeavors, or they are companies, and they're doing their websites or doing social media. But it's important what you just said. Sometimes it doesn't make sense for your audience. Like you said, they have everything they need on YouTube. There's a Facebook page. They can interact with you there. All you need to do is watch the video, and that's it. So it's kind of knowing your audience and you know customizing it to them. So yeah, and cool. now they've gr now it's grown to the point where we could offer them right. some things at a website. But when it first started, we had nothing. Right. We had no content to put on a website. Yeah, so it a forty-five second video, like come to this website to watch this forty-five second video, you know, mm -hmm. didn't really make sense. And why did you choose YouTube over a Vimeo or something? Just because it's more uh, because popular? Because your grandmother knows how to watch a YouTube channel. Um, I, I've there. noticed <laughs> that I've noticed that filmmakers tend to gravitate towards Vimeo because of the compression quality. But no offense to Vimeo, the audience is not there. The that the the, the normal average viewer is not at Vimeo. They're not searching Vimeo for funny things. They're not searching those things. And they don't, you know, general people don't know, just don't know it as much. That's more of an industry thing. But anyone can share a YouTube video. Everyone knows how to play a YouTube video and share it on Facebook and stuff like that. So it's the ease of it more than anything. Um, and so you mentioned sponsors, so like Icy Light contacting you in the comments. And I know Turner Ice Tea is your sponsor. So how did you guys decide to sort of work with a certain company or that type of thing? How did that come um, out? That was, a, that was actually a tough decision because Turner's, they contact, contacted us very early on. I mean, it was literally episode two or three. Um, and they have a really great marketing guy over there who, um, like a young guy that's like, way forward thinking for an iced tea company, you know what I mean? Like, it's like funny that he's like, you know, working for, you know, such a uh, traditional family-owned business and, and he's so much more forward thinking, but um, he contacted us very early on and we dragged our feet for a couple months. We were just yeah, worried about selling out or product placement and we, uh, we didn't want uh, people to be put off by the videos all of a sudden, oh, here, look, we got a big iced tea jug in it now because, you know, they're selling out. So we were like, we're very weary of that. And so that was that was a huge like hesitation on our part. Mm -hmm. And we got we actually got contacted by at the time seven or eight different sponsors, and uh, we actually chose Turner's over the other ones because they were a local company and a family company. Because I was like, like this. yeah, we we just were like very hesitant to be like suddenly throwing like you know Miller Lite. He's like, well, that the, you know what I mean. Like I guess it kind of fits, but at yeah. the same time we just want to be careful. I think now we probably have a little bit more flexibility. I think now that people have seen yeah. the Turner's thing, we probably have a little bit more flexibility. People trust that, like, no, this is not going to just be a giant commercial for Turner's iced tea. Mm -hmm. That that there's still going to be a, a connection there. Yeah, or you could actually capitalize on all the sponsorships and just intentionally throw all these things into one video or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, we, like we actually <laughs> had we throw products in our videos regardless. It's like we'll just like we'll throw like a bag of Snyder's potato chips uh -huh. and just because it's a Pittsburgh thing or we'll throw an, an icy light or all these different or wear a t-shirt we don't like we just do it because it's Pittsburgh uh -huh. because it makes us happy it makes the audience happy we don't like you know get anything from that right. so it's just more like inadvertently. Yeah that makes sense. And um, I know you guys have met a lot of Pittsburgh celebs. I saw there was Heinz Ward and Mayor Pittsburgh Dad Install the other day. And my personal favorite, Sally Wiggins. So who's been your favorite person you've met so far? 
Oh wow. I mean, I besides mean, besides me. Besides <laughs> you, exactly. Um, everyone's been really like very nice and very cool with us, and like, oh, like welcomed us in with open arms. Um, um, I'm a huge Steelers fan, so I would have to say like any any Steelers. I got to actually hang out with the Steelers in La Trobe um, during training camp and Coach Tomlin and Kevin Colbert and gets behind. Everyone has just been really great. You know, I'm so, I, 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 we get to places and we're like in awe. We're like, we're kind of starstruck. But it, it's been a really great ride and a really great experience. And like I said, everyone's been really great. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll probably echo that. Heinz Ward is probably the one that I was probably the most kind of not starstruck by. But I mean, just as we were filming and even as we were driving there, I just like kept every like hours like, can you believe this is happening? Can you believe this is happening? And like literally every day. We to, still to this day, we keep texting each other like, can you believe what's happening? You know, the thing with the mayor two days ago, we're just like, what is happening? Like, we're still sh we're still blindsided by this thing because we never had the intention. And, and honestly, when we first started shooting it, um, it was it was last year, it was, it was at a time when we both were struggling to figure out what was the next step for our careers. Like, we were like, man, it's, just, it's so hard to get things going sometimes. It's like you can just like work so passionately and so hard on something, a business, a project, a film, something, and just like there's no eyeballs or there's just, like, there's just not getting the momentum you want. And so it really, Pittsburgh Dead came out of us hanging out for a week, kind of just moping, you know, just moping that we wanted, you know, that we were just like, we're so, for, for now, like for it to be a year later, and I keep reminding him, I'm like, you remember a year ago what was going on? Like, you remember a year ago was this? And I, and just even Thursday when the mayor like proclaimed it Pittsburgh Dad Day in the city, I was like, what happened? Like, what? Is this real life? <laughs> yeah, like what just cool. happened? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, well, you guys deserve it. I mean, they're, the videos are hysterical and they're well, just thank great. Thank you. It's kind of you to say. So, you yeah. know. So I don't want to uh, take this whole thing. If you guys have any questions from the audience, here we have one up front. Yeah, um, in your videos, your neighbor Tom, is that based off uh, at your neighbor, the one you guys had going up with some of the company Tom? Uh, no, let, I, let me just repeat that. So the question was, is Tom the neighbor a real person or no? How did Tom come about? We just, I think it was, around like the, the second string of episodes we were filming, I'd come back from LA and uh, we just needed to give Pittsburgh Dad an arch rival and what better oh. arch rival for a uh, Steelers fan would be a Ravens fan from Baltimore who did not, who does not take care of his lawn. Um, if, you ever, if you ever, <laughs> my, if you ever be my father, he is, we call him the lawn Nazi. Uh, if you, you can't even like walk up to the front door like, through the grass or be like, oh, come on. You gotta walk around and everything. So it's, uh, so someone having like someone like Tom was just based on we needed like an or like a villain type guy, and so that's where it kind of came from. It, it's funny if you watch like earlier episodes, like the very first Tom episode is called Cutting Grass, and it's literally like you ever think about cutting that grass yours? There's gonna be snakes. So like it literally started as like you don't cut your grass. Now if you watch an episode where he talks about Tom, it's like the porch is falling down, the house looks haunted. It's like it's like really grown. But the um the the we didn't have like in those first couple episodes he ne we never mentioned any characters' names besides Deb, and that was literally day one. Also we were filming a thing, and he's like, I think his wife's name is Deb. Like I was really very plainly going, Chris, I think his wife's name is Deb. And I'm like, that sounds hysterical um, but then that, yeah that second batch of episodes after the first three the second batch of episodes where we started introducing other characters like Linda and Rick and those Jeffy and my favorite Jeffy yeah <laughs> um, who was who is based on a real person oh, yeah there yeah. actually was two real Jeffies in life but the um, the characters if you know we we had a really like we really came to a decision at one point we said are we gonna show these people we said are we gonna start bringing them in and we actually filmed an episode with his friend Pete in the episode. Like we actually had another actor in there with him, whatever. And as I was watching it to edit it, I just was like, this does not feel right. I was like, it just suddenly does it just suddenly changed the show. So we didn't release it. And then I remember telling him, I'm like, Kurt, I'm like, this might sound crazy, but I just think we're never going to see any character ever. And now I think at this point, I think any character we did show would just ruin it for the our, our audience. And it's, they, they, the, the characters work better in your mind than, than what we could ever put out there. So, because it lets you, it lets the audience kind of fill in the picture. Like you think you know what Deb looks like, you think you know what Tom looks like. If we suddenly threw an actress that's Deb, it might be completely against what you've built in your mind now. So, like. 
we well that's one of the things we're like kind of prideful about is like we might be one of the first shows where the entire cast is not on screen. <laughs> like there's literally one cast member and then there's like 30 other cast members that you never see. It's cutting edge. <laughs> Question down here. Do you ever look at, say, like old Jim Varney commercials, like, you know, you know what I mean, Bird, and or Bob Newhart doing comedy routines? Like, he would do similar comedy routines for inspiration. I do remember I was like a big Ernest fan growing up. I remember I'd be more so the movies than what the, the, the comedy he did before he got into that. He used to do commercials like right. talking to an invisible bird. I, I'm more of like, I mean, a lot of the um, style and the inspiration, my, I, I was, I'm still a huge All in the Family fan and just that style of comedy. Um, but we get a lot of like inspiration from shows like The Wonder Years, uh, Roseanne, um, there's Al Bundy in there. <laughs> so, I mean, um, I wasn't really a Newhart fan. My mom and dad remember watching Newhart and that was when I was like, I'm leaving the room now. We're play on the board, so. Yeah, not a lot of Newhart though. Well, any other questions? Yep. How about those glasses? Uh, did you find them laying around, or did you actually? That was Goodwill. That was literally yeah. after we were at lunch. The glass. He's asking about the glasses that Dad wears. It was. You walked around the corner. Chris walked around the corner with the glasses. Like, here they are. <laughs> I can't see. I mean, they're real glasses. The good thing is, I think they're my prescription now, so it's all right. <laughs> and the other people, most people can't really notice their bifocals. <laughs> like he literally has bifocals on their prescription. So yeah, he has like he's constantly like. <laughs> yeah, it was a random Goodwill on the, on the way home from lunch. Is your dad still around, and what does he think of this? Uh, my dad is still around. Um, they live in New Stanton. Uh, he's a humongous fan. Both my parents have really, really great sense of humor, which is, which is where I got my sense of humor. My dad's a really funny guy. He can be really, really funny. Um, he can be funny, and he doesn't even know it because we're laughing at him, and he, just because he's very, like, he just goes off on the simplest things, which is where a lot of the, of the um, inspiration comes from. But yeah, he is, my dad is a really big fan. Like, he'll, if you ever, um, we'll post something and if you check the comments, he's always right down there, his name's Keith. And he's, he, he's always like, well, did you see what this person said? That's funny. Did you see what this person, and he's, yeah, he's, he's a really great supporter and loves it. Just even the other day when we were at the mayor's office, like, you know, we're sitting there ready to go in for this ceremony or whatever, and him and I just look over, and there's his dad and his uncle, like, checking the varnish it's on the wall. Like, like <laughs> craftsmanship here, see how it's done? It's like, oh, yeah, that, who do you think that is? I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the last question. Yeah, so I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys have such a great relationship. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just like, you know, you guys are just like, you He's gonna reimburse me for that parking in there at twenty dollars. He's like all like flipping out in his fantasy. That's great. Any other questions? We have one. Will we ever find out who's her dad's person? Uh, we've always talked about if we do finally do a last episode. If there was ever like, hey, it's over now, something like that. We'll, we'll do a last episode. We will reveal his name. Um, but Sex it, in the city. <laughs> yeah, 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 Sex and the City, yeah. They are really similar shows. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but we, yeah, exactly. But we we also said, like, if you see one of our, thir our, I think it's our third episode, Snow, where he's in the yeah. garage, he has a jacket on that we just randomly, once again, it was in that first Goodwill buy. So it's just some random, like, St. Stephen's or something, church, like, baseball league or whatever, but it says Coach Russ on it. So we get all these people like, is his name Russ? I'm like, no. We just That's just a, a typical Pittsburgh dad thing. He's like, well, it's a good coat. We don't care if it's not my name. We don't still wear it. So kind of played it off like that. I think I saw a hand in the back. Was there one back there? Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask, um, what did you tag that first video they gave you with 1,000 hits in the first day? What was your tag? What was your tag? Oh, it was our tag. Um, our tags were um, Charlie Bit My Finger, I Just Dean, Joseph Coney. Um, <laughs> Channing Tatum. The Channing Tatum Immaculate. Mobile Leprechaun. Yeah, <laughs> Leprechaun. Um, yeah, no, the, um, I don't, I mean, I think, on, I think honestly it was just like the tags in it was just Pittsburgh Dad, Kurt Wooten, Chris Brexta. I think it was like Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, Three Rivers, Heinz Field, Myron Cope, DVE, KDKA, Mr. Rogers. 
Um, what honestly, what happened that first that first video, or, or at least why I think it had a little bit of a click that first week, was that we actually got the Facebook page and the Twitter, and we started using Facebook and Twitter a week or two weeks. I can't remember. It was either a week or two before the first episode was up. So we started this Pittsburgh Dead Facebook page where we were just putting status updates in character. No one even knew what this was, and we had literally like. 30 fans yeah, or something, and they were all our fam yeah. and friends, and it would just be Pittsburgh Dad jokes, like what we do on the, the Facebook page now, where we were just doing these status updates. So it had garnered a, you know, some for, you know, friends and fans on there that, that we could say, first episode hits Tuesday, you know, and, and so those 30 people were ready for it. Um, so kind of giving them like a little taste of what to expect. Yes, and that first day, what really helped us is that a friend of ours uh, who's a stand-up comedian, forwarded, I, I think, forwarded the video to the guys at uh, WDB, and they shared it on their Facebook page and shared it on their website um, that first day. And so that's really what started, I think, those first couple views. And then um, Pit Girl over at Pittsburgh Magazine, she also tweeted about it because uh, she had been a fan of Mercury Men and been following Mercury Men, and she had no idea that it was the same people. Like, she was a fan of Kurtz from Mercury Men, but she had no idea that Kurt was Pittsburgh dad. It so she, she just, yeah, then like a week later, she's like, wait, what? These are the same people, <laughs> you know? So yeah, that, that's really that first week how it did. It wasn't so much the tags, like people weren't out there searching for it. It was more the fact that we had kind of built, laid some groundwork on social media before the first episode. I think we have time for one more question. How much of your lives are you dedicating to Pittsburgh Dad now? Like, is it become like a full-time gig, or are you still doing some other things? It's definitely full-time, um, but we we but now instead of now we, we still do other things, but now we just they take place of uh, hobbies and weekends. You know, now it's just it it does like an episode takes us. You know, it's about two days to write it. It's a day to film it, and then it's two days to edit it. So that's a five-day turnaround for, for an episode. And, and they're, they're really short, you know, but when you only have two people doing it, you know, that's just it's a lot of work. And yeah, just like a lot of, like, we write so much, so many of our jokes don't even ever make the final cut, which I'm always like, ah, oh, there's some really good jokes. But we just always, with the way YouTube is and the way our audience viewers are and the way most YouTube viewers are, you just gotta be real quick. Like, three minutes, Chris always like, three minutes, no more. It's like, oh, we gotta get that under three, so. Yeah. And I mean, we could, you, we could make it a full-time job just responding to fan messages on Facebook. I mean, it's like, it's a, you know, a couple hundred a day. So it just, we just so, we try to, we try to engage with them. I mean, because people are sharing like real stories. I mean, people will literally be, you know, they'll send us stuff about like, you know, oh, you remind my dad, he passed away four years ago. Thanks for connecting me. Or I've been living in uh, Japan for five years, or I've been living in Virginia. Yeah, a lot of soldiers, like a lot of people, a lot of displaced Pittsburghers that are sharing their stories with you. So we try to be as engaged with the community as we can. We do fan meet and greets where we're just like, hey, like we were done, we were on vacation in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We saw there was a Permani Brothers in Fort Lauderdale, and we just were like, hey, we're gonna be here. If you guys want to come have a beer with us? Come on down. And we showed up, and there was like 50 people there waiting, chanting, "Here we go, Steelers." Um, <laughs> We walked in the door, so we try to, uh, you know, kind of engage with fans as often as we can with contests and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's most definitely a full-time job. Cool. Well, I know we're uh, running out of time, and the next sessions start at ten. So, I just want to thank you guys again. Thank for you for having us today. Thank you guys. And make sure if you're not subscribed yet to Pittsburgh Dad or Pittsburgh Dad on YouTube, Pittsburgh underscore Dad on Twitter. And yes. Pittsburgh Dad on Facebook. Yeah. So. That don't what would, underscore. What would Pittsburgh Dad say about social media and, and podcast? What, what would he think of it? Oh, uh, shit. You don't need all that. All you need is a newspaper. I got by with it for all my life. That's what you know. Now what Now what else do you need that takes batteries or plugs in? Or it's going to cost me money. No. Absolutely not. Next, if you break it down, you need another one, you have to take it down to Best Buy's. Absolutely not. 